evening. We have a decadent culture. Our society is loaded with decadence. My aim tonight is to point out the decadence, to describe the many varieties of this decadence. Some may say I'm judgmental. Some may say I overreact. But I believe I am the rational and healthy one here. Decadence needs to be removed. Today, I am doing my part to educate the population about decadence. One of the most disgusting forms of decadence is a phenomenon known as sex changes. Sadly, sex changes have been have become a possibility since about 30, 40 years ago. It's unfortunate that this technology was advanced. Sex changes are one of the most unnatural practices our society has adopted. Sex changes are thus one of the most decadent practices our society has adopted. I react strongly two ways to sex changes. One is on a mental level. It makes no sense to me. A rational person reacts to someone who says, I was born a man in a woman's body, or vice versa, as being nuts. I also react in, in a more visceral way. This reaction is shuddering, is cringing, is wanting to vomit. The unnatural makes me want to vomit. People are going to say there's something wrong with me reacting this way to sex change. I believe they're the ones that are wrong. Take this analogy. You first smoke a cigarette. What does your body do? Your body coughs. This cough is to protect you from putting the harmful cigarette into your mouth, letting the tobacco get inside you. After you start smoking for a while, your body no longer coughs when you light up a cigarette. It's not because the practice of smoking has become healthy. No. Instead, it's because you have been accustomed to something unhealthy. In society, we don't cough anymore when the poison of a sex change comes in. Liberals will endlessly rant and rave about genetic engineering. They tell us genetic engineering is harmful. But they're not consistent. Folks, if you're going to be inconsistent, it's usually wise to be inconsistent on a less drastic way. But liberals are inconsistent, favoring a more drastic practice. They don't like genetic engineering on plants or even animals, but when it's used on humans, they have no problem. They want it. They support it wholeheartedly. What is sex changes but genetic engineering? Liberals also will condemn breast enhancement surgery. They mock and scoff those who dare to have breast enhancement surgery. But a sex 
changes way more drastic than breast enhancement surgery. Any arguments they can make against breast enhancement surgery can be made against sex changes. In this area, I consider myself a conservative. Across the board, I vary. This is especially based on one definition of conservative and liberal proposed by Paul Gottfried and Thomas Fleming in the book The Conservative Movement. They claim one definition of conservative is believing in the fixed, while liberal is believing in the mutable. Conservatives believe there's male, there's female. Liberals believe there's a spectrum of gender. Liberals believe gender is ambiguous. Conservatives believe gender is fixed. I believe it's very harmful for our gene pool, for our future species, to believe gender is gray. Gender is black and white, folks. Certainly there will always be fringe cases where we wonder about the gender, but to actively promote gender realignment is incredibly foul. It's a mutation. A disgusting mutation. A mutation which will have drastic consequences for our species in the future. We can't even begin to imagine what happens when this type of practice becomes accepted. These folks claim they're transcending gender, but they're not transcending anything. They are the ones most obsessed with gender. Some of the rest of us realize society has very rigid standards. Liberals will say this all the time. I personally don't fit in to every criteria that males are supposed to act according to society's gender's roles. But I don't go out and change my gender. What I do is say, I'm going to deal with it. Transcending sounds beautiful, but they're not transcending. By changing your sex, you're not transcending your sex. By changing your sex, what you are doing is telling everyone loud and clear you believe in gender roles more than anyone else. These people who have sex changes say, I was born a man in a woman's body. I have to act the way a man acts, but I have but I can't do that. They believe I can't do that in the body I have. They believe in these notions of males act this way, females act this way. Get over it. They're the regressive ones, folks. They're not continuing in this progressive tradition. Any identity which is made through the work of doctors is not a good identity. These doctors are perfecting sex change surgery. It's their handiwork, not the handiwork of the people who have the sex changes. The people who have the sex changes have this big identity based on it. They say they can pass as whatever gender they had the sex change to. This, to me, is the ultimate worship of medical science. I don't want to do that, folks. The MOVE organization has been noted for opposing these abominable practices of medical science. Instead of these doctors using their skills, their education for good, they are perfecting sex changes. Instead of finding cures for cancer, which virtually only they can do with their background, they waste their energy, time, and resources on sex changes. Liberals want us to feel sorry 
for people who have sex changes. They want us to feel sympathy. They say people who have sex changes are oppressed, they're ostracized, life is difficult for them. I don't feel sorry for them. I use my naturally limited allotment of compassion for the best possible cases. I feel sorry, try and feel sorry for people who deserve it. Why don't these people deserve sympathy? One reason is because they bring it on themselves. If you discriminate against people who are born black, you're discriminating on grounds some matter a person cannot control. Sex changes, people have the option. An even more profound reason they're not feeling sorry for people who have sex changes is because the very nature of a sex change defines the person as an elitist. Why do I say this? I say this because in order to have a sex change, you have to be an elitist. People I'm not going to feel sorry for. I've read in these books, on these sites, you have to have lots of money to have sex changes. One book says it ranges from $35,000 to $70,000. That's no small change. I don't think I've ever been even close to seeing that much money, ever. My highest salary for one year has been $8,000. For the low-end surgeries, it would take over four years of all my salary going to that. Should I feel sorry for someone that has this much money to throw around? It's very selfish when you have kids who need your money to spend your money on a sex change. If you're going to pay $50,000 for a needed heart surgery, I can understand that. But this luxury is absurd. I don't feel sorry for these rich elitists. Poor people can't have sex change surgeries. When was the last time someone from the ghetto had a sex change surgery? It doesn't happen. We need to shut down these sex change operation clinics, hospitals. The problem lies with people who have already had sex changes. As sad as it is, we can't do anything about them. They've already underwent the surgery. It's wrong to harass these people. It's wrong to hate them as people. We also cannot promote this type of activity. I love the straight edge movement. The straight edge movement is one of the most beautiful forces to have arose in not only contemporary times, but I will even go as far as saying in world history. That's how much I love straight edge. In many ways, the straight edge scene is the antithesis of decades. Sadly, there's a couple of practices straight edge people practice which are decadent. One of these is piercing. I don't understand why people get these in the first place. Once upon a time, only women wore earrings. Then some males started to wear earrings. Usually males put it on the left ear. There was the stigma of putting it on the right ear, you are gay. Then nose rings became popular, then maybe eyebrow rings. Nowadays, virtually every part of your body can be pierced. Even private parts. It has gone very far. I don't find it aesthetically pleasing. It seems very ugly to me. It's very ironic 
And although these people te tend to think they're different than some of these mainstream people who read Cosmopolitan and Glamour, they are really very similar. On the surface, they look very different. You have these people applying all this makeup on their face, plucking every hair. Then you have these people piercing their body. They're the same because both groups are going through painful, essentially arbitrary rituals in order to look what is deemed fashionable. Ironically, I would suggest the women who read these glamour magazines, who go through these painful rituals, as liberals will tell you, are doing the less decadent practice, while people with piercings are the more decadent practice. It destroys the flesh. It's not good. There's an old saying, I have enough holes in my body already. It's very true. Why pierce and put more in? Once while on the internet, I was doing a random search. Sometimes I like to plug in random phrases. The phrase I plugged in was the worst pain of my life. What do you think came up? Story of someone getting beaten endlessly by police officers? Nope. A story of someone being skinned alive? Nope. A story of someone being burned to death? Nope. A story of someone being raped? Nope. A story of someone in a medieval torture chamber? No. Nope. Lots of the hits I got were stories of piercing. These people told their stories of painful piercing experiences. A very act of piercing is painful. Biologists tell us when we have pain, it's our body's way of telling us what is going on is dangerous. It is to be avoided. But sadly, people embrace piercings the way people embrace green pancakes. There's always the infection issue. You sometimes hear stories about people getting nasty infections. Is it worth the risk, I ask? I don't think so. Piercings also have been known to be dangerous. Mad Magazine has poked fun at piercings because they are dangerous. I think about it from an athletic perspective. My cross-country coach and college's son, who himself was also a cross-country coach, told a story of how one of his teammates had a major disaster due to a piercing. What happened was he had a belly button ring. It was not loose. Blood was certainly there. He couldn't even go to the bathroom right for a while. That doesn't sound like fun to me. Cross country is not even a contact sport. Just imagine how piercings would work in other sports. It's gross to ponder. Back in my MTV watching days, I saw a video which made me cringe. There was an artist named Jane Child. Most people have no clue who she was, who she is. She had an earring and a nose ring. The two were connected with a chain. It looked tough, it looked cool, but it scared me. I couldn't help but think what would happen if some enemy or some sadistic person yanked that chain. It would not be a pretty picture. folks are not good ideas. To me, the benefits of looking fashionable 
something I don't find aesthetically pleasing anyways is not worth all the cost. Tattoos are also another practice sadly embraced by the straight edge See, In fact, my early years of internet use, I was on a mailing list about straight edge. I was soon disappointed to find out little on this mailing list discussed the straight edge, lifestyle, philosophy, or even bands. People were going on and on about their tattoos and piercings. Tattoos tend to have a more nobler motivation than piercings. You often hear people getting tattoos because they want to signify some very important event, circumstance, situation, idea, or belief. Some straight edgers get straight edge tattoos. I think this is a more nobler way to have a tattoo. Sadly, I don't believe tattoos are to be gotten. As much as I love straight edge, I still don't want a straight edge tattoo. I don't find tattoos aesthetically pleasing either. Even when they have neat designs, they don't seem aesthetically pleasing. Virtually any tattoo on the skin looks ugly to me. One example of how tattooing is so innately decadent was an advertisement by two tattoo places in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, where it was before here. They said, sterile equipment. Why are they advertising this? It should be a given. Restaurants don't advertise mold-free food, roach-free food. No way. What they do advertise is something out of the ordinary. One argument parents and others give about tattoos is the permanency of it. We've all heard stories about people getting tattoos. One time, we're getting them later. We've heard gang members doing this. We also hear it's very difficult, it's not impossible, to remove the tattoo. At the very least, it's incredibly painful. Not only do you go through the original pain, but you have to go through more pain to get it removed. I hear many times they can't even remove it. It's that difficult. In one vegan newsletter, they told the story of this one man who got really passionate very quickly about veganism. He got tattooed vegan for life. Not too much later, he wasn't vegan anymore. When I worked for Wendy's, the manager had a woman's name on his arm. I asked him about it. He sadly informed me she broke up with him. I don't believe in certainty. Certainty is not a concept that exists in my world. Therefore, getting a tattoo is something that doesn't work for me. I don't believe we should be betting on certainty. One ad clearly illustrated the dangers of getting tattoos. This ad had the theme good ideas and bad ideas. The good idea to this ad was buying the automobile. The bad idea was a picture which is said to be worth a thousand words of one man college age getting a big tattoo on his back which said Spring Break 92. No matter how fun Spring Break 92 was, that seems very silly to get permanently etched on your back. Tattoos also have the problem of infections too. You hear horrible stories about tattoo infection. They are to be avoided for those grounds. My cross country coach in college would give me grief about my hair. He told me I'd never get a job with my hair the way it was. Maybe so. But what was incredibly ironic, inconsistent of him, there were a number of people on our team who had tattoos piercings or both. Yet, I don't remember him ever criticizing them about not getting a job with those. Those look bad for job prospects. Hair, I can 
cut any time I want. Tattoos are much more difficult to remove. If we want to have a more healthy society, I believe tattoos, as the Bible says, mutilation of the flesh, is to be avoided. Sadly, there's destruction of life in many ways. Fortunately, in our culture, fortunately, people such as Herbert M. Shelton and the MOVE organization affirm life. They believe strongly in doing what is natural, what is healthy. They are wonderful opponents of decadence. If our society will endlessly destroy life, then we are to deem it decadent. If our society affirms life, then we are to deem it not decadent. Destroying life is bad news, folks. It is one of the greatest examples of decadence. Hedonism is decadent, too. Hedonism is one of the world's worst philosophy. There's an excellent book called The Other Side of Morality, which critiques and condemns hedonism. They compare hedonism to a treadmill. They say, in a very pithy, saying, pleasure sought is pleasure lost. What they are suggesting is when you are always going after pleasure, you soon lose it. Behaviorist theory explains exactly why. Behaviorist theory tells us eventually some pleasure, no matter how intense, will wear off. If you have sex every single night, it will soon wear off. This is the folly of hedonism. I believe an undisciplined life is a life of rubbish. We need discipline. Discipline makes us stronger. It makes us better. Hedonists are not fulfilling themselves. They're pursuing only the base levels. They're ignoring the more sublime aspects of existence. Hedonists are just great for humanity. There's so much good you can do in life. It is foolish to pursue only pleasure. I am, in a number of ways, anti-hedonist. I don't believe pleasure or indulgence necessarily is bad. What I do believe, this is a key insight I have derived from existence, is we need to indulge within parameters. We need to have some borders to our indulgence. We can't indulge unrestrained. I believe hedonism is essentially masochism. It's masochism because in the long run, the activities of hedonists lead to pain. If you smoke crack every single day, it may be pleasurable at first, but in the long run, you're going to suffer. That, to me, is masochism. There's a lot you can learn from being ascetic. There's a lot you can learn from sacrifice, from giving up. The old saying is, absence makes the heart grow fonder, whether it's from a love or from some object, some impulse. Behavior theory tells us this is called deprivation. They say the pleasure actually becomes more intense when you're deprived from it. Hedonism is one of the world's worst philosophies. It is. Second, sadly, our society is very hedonistic. Many people think hedonism is rational. Many people don't sacrifice. Very, very utterly sad. Caffeine is also decadent. Caffeine is very prevalent. One of my professors says it's the number one addiction in America. I am glad I gave up caffeine. I encourage the rest of you to give it up too. You don't need it at all. 
There's many better ways to recharge yourself than caffeine. One tablet says moderation. I say none at all. Herbert M. Shelton said we need moderation in everything normal and healthy, abstinence from everything abnormal and unhealthy. Caffeine is abnormal and unhealthy. It will do harm for you. It won't do good. When I was younger, I had a headache. Back then, I took aspirin when I had a headache. No, no longer do I do that. I was at my mom's house. I grabbed a couple of aspirin. They looked small. I downed them. In a short while, my heart bumped real quickly. Started to feel a little dizzy, tired. I told my mom about it. She informed me they were not aspirin. They were caffeine pills. She told me I took a very, very high dosage. The little pills apparently had lots of caffeine in them. We have known caffeine in coffee and tea, certainly in soda. In the last couple of years, we have seen caffeine even in water. Water is considered a pure beverage. Why are they tainting it? A decadent culture is to the point where they taint caffeine. Even worse than caffeine as a drug is alcohol. Alcohol is pervasive too. The use of alcohol makes no sense to me. I have not found any good reason to use alcohol. It's not good news. When I was in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, I was told that city had the record for the most number of bars in a square mile. Something is very wrong when a city has that, when people realize this. That city is shameful then. We see lots of alcoholism in our society. Even moderate drinking is not ideal. There has been lots of scientific evidence about the negative health effects of alcohol. People do get tobacco. People largely understand tobacco is bad. But when you try to tell people alcohol harms the body, people think you're nuts. It doesn't make any sense. It is proof positive the liquor industry has brainwashed this decade. When I was in La Crosse, Wisconsin, visiting my mother for the holidays, I saw a horrible sign. It was a picture of Bud Light. It said, always in the mood. Who was the extremist here? Not me. If you're always in the mood for drinking, that's drinking morning, noon, and night. That's not good, folks. That is decadent. There is so much harm, little of any good that comes from alcohol. I ask you, is your buzz, your hedonistic fix, that important that it justifies all this harm in society? I sure hope not. There's something wrong with you if it is. Drugs are also used in medicine. I don't necessarily recommend people avoiding all drugs through medicine, but instead minimizing their use. I do realize using drugs for medicinal purposes is much different than using drugs recreationally. I try, if all possible, to avoid drugs for medicinal purposes. I have found I can cope with a headache without aspirin. Looks just fine. Biologists tell us pain is a way of letting our body know something is wrong. Thus, what I do if I have a headache, I find sleeping very healthy, much more healthy than taking an aspirin. Lots of people have noticed psychiatrists Others are in a frantic race to have everyone who is deemed mentally ill to be given all types of drugs. That's decadence, folks. That is decadence. Today you see, especially in your spam, all these types of drugs. People are promoting drugs left and right. It's not good news. It's not 
good news at all. Another form of decadence is eating animals. I hope someday we look back at our society, we wonder why people would eat animals. I believe someday, hopefully, people are going to think that way. It's wise to become a vegetarian. I recommend you doing that. It takes sacrifice. It takes discipline. But I will almost guarantee you this. I'm not a person, as I said, who bets on certainty. But I will almost guarantee you your life will be better by far. My life has become better by far from becoming a vegetarian. They claim there's negative health consequences of being vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for five years, vegan, for not quite as long, but pretty close to as long. I haven't had negative health effects from it. I recommend it, folks. I seriously recommend it. Marijuana is an abomination. Sadly, some people think marijuana is okay. I've known people who realize drunk driving is bad, but they think driving under the influence of marijuana is fine. You have to think about it. When you think about it, you realize a drug that can affect your body the way marijuana does is not good for you. Marijuana destroys your body, destroys your mind, destroys your soul. That is decadence. Lots of people want to legalize it. Lots of people think it's great smoke. It's not. People say, you haven't tried it. How can you knock it? Because I'm rational. There's a lot people haven't tried. You have not put a grenade in your mouth, hold the plug. Don't knock it until you try it. What a dumb idea for smoking pot. There aren't good ideas for smoking pot. There's not good justification for decadence. Gambling is also a decadent practice. I would like to see erased from our society. Lots of people know the addictive nature of gambling. Gambling is not healthy for a society. Sadly, there's not many people today condemning gambling. I hate how our political discourse, our public discourse, is only based on a few issues. There's gay rights, there's the Iraq war, there's health care. But nobody seems to care about gambling. The casinos must love this. We've heard stories about people losing their farms, losing lots to gambling. I don't want to touch gambling with a pen foot stick. I don't want to get into that because it can lead to negative consequences, very negative consequences. I don't have the money in the first place to deal with gambling. I'm not going to throw away the little money I have on gambling. I believe, with others, gambling is immoral. Mostly it's immoral for a number of reasons. One of these is how predatory these casinos, these gambling establishments are. These people are destroying our culture, our society. They are thieves. But no one seems to care. That's an indication of our society becoming unhealthy. We're not reacting the way healthy bodies react. Sun tanning also has become very prominent. I look at sun tans, I don't think they look attractive. Maybe it's because my sense of attractive is based on what is natural, what is healthy. While many people's sense of attractive 
is based on the decadence. This space is concerning. It doesn't seem good to be lying in an oven to roast your skin. We also hear from cancer organizations the dangers of candy in regard to skin cancer. I don't want to take that risk. I don't think it's worth it. Canning outside is one deal. The canning in booth, that is incredibly decadent. A healthy society wouldn't have this phenomenon of sun kits, of canning that. When your system begins to react to the unhealthy in a violent, extreme way, your system is on target. We need to crush this decadence in society. This is decadence is often not acknowledged by others. I am here today acknowledging it. I want a better way. I want a society without this decadence. We need to decimate decadence. We need to remove it, to eradicate it. Because love of virtue demands it. Let's destroy decadence. Long live life. Good evening.